the James Webb Space Telescope observed the rate at which the universe is expanding and confirmed a significant issue, the Hubble tension. This indicates that the universe is expanding faster than predicted by our best cosmological models, posing a fundamental challenge to our understanding. Initially thought to be a technological limitation, the Webb Telescope's results exacerbated the crisis. It suggests a missing element in our calculations or observations, deepening the cosmological tension. Resolving the Hubble tension is crucial as it could unveil new physics and enhance our comprehension of the expanding universe. The Hubble tension stands as the most significant crisis in cosmology. Its roots trace back a century to the 1920s when Harlow Shapley and Herbert Curtis engaged in the Great Debate. This debate revolved around the scale of the universe, whether our Milky Way galaxy constituted the entire cosmos or if there were other galaxies beyond it, expanding the universe's size. At that time, the prevailing belief held that the Milky Way encompassed the entire universe, with other galaxies like Andromeda considered star systems within it. Shapley argued for a Milky Way about 300,000 light years wide, with all star systems contained within its outskirts. Conversely, Curtis contended that these nebulae were independent galaxies, akin to our Milky Way, situated far beyond its boundaries. The Great Debate occurred on April 26, 1920, marking a clash of visions regarding the scale of the universe and the nature of nebulae. Despite the fervent exchange, there was no conclusive outcome. Astronomers remained divided. However, the resolution to the question came not from Shapley or Curtis, but from the meticulous work of American astronomer Edwin Hubble. In the 1920s, using the powerful telescope at the Mount Wilson Observatory, Hubble made a groundbreaking discovery. He observed Chephide variable stars in the Andromeda Nebula, then thought to be part of the Milky Way. By measuring the distance to the Cephid variable star V, one in the Andromeda Galaxy, he found it to be about one million light years away, three times greater than Shapley's estimate of the Milky Way's size. This validated Curtis's assertion that spiral nebulae were indeed large galaxies like our own, marking a pivotal moment in our understanding of the cosmos, although Hubble's estimate was later refined. Edwin Hubble's groundbreaking discovery revealed that the universe is significantly larger than previously believed. However, this revelation brought forth a profound conundrum. As Hubble delved deeper into the cosmos, he noticed a compelling trend. Galaxies in distant space appeared to be moving away from us, with those farther away receding at faster speeds. This observation led to a simple yet pivotal relation. The velocity at which a galaxy recedes, v, is directly proportional to its distance from us, d. This fundamental relationship gave rise to the Hubble constant, a number that has become one of the most contentious issues in astronomy. The Hubble constant signifies the rate at which a galaxy is moving away from us for every megaparsec MPC of distance, with a megaparsec equal to approximately 3.26 million light years. Understanding this constant is crucial for deciphering recent discoveries made by telescopes like the James Webb Space Telescope. In this scenario, Galaxy A is one megaparsec away from us, and Galaxy B is twice as far at two megaparsecs away. If the Hubble constant is 70 kilometers per s per megaparsec, Galaxy A would be receding from us at a speed of 70 kilometers per s, while Galaxy B, being twice as far, would be receding at 140 kilometers per s, two multiplied by 70 kilometers per s per megaparsec. This expansion isn't due to galaxies physically moving through space, but rather to the stretching of space itself, as explained by the Hubble constant, indicating the rate of the universe's expansion. However, the challenge arises in accurately measuring the distance to galaxies. While determining the velocity of recession using redshift is relatively straightforward, 
measuring distance has always been problematic. Astronomers devised a solution by using a specific type of stars called Cepheid variables, which pulsate regularly. These stars serve as standard candles, allowing astronomers to estimate distances based on their observed brightness. Despite this method, accurately measuring distances to galaxies millions of light years away remains a complex task, introducing uncertainties into calculations of the Hubble constant. Cepheid variables, discovered by Henrietta Swan Leavitt in the early 1900s, pulsate in a predictable pattern with their pulsation period directly related to their true brightness or luminosity. This relationship allows astronomers to estimate distances to galaxies using three steps. Firstly, astronomers observe the pulsation of a Cepheid variable in a distant galaxy and measure the time it takes for the star to complete one full cycle of brightening and dimming. Since the period is linked to its brightness, astronomers use the period luminosity relation to determine the star's absolute magnitude or true brightness. For example, if a star takes 30 days to complete a cycle, its absolute magnitude might be 4.85. The second step involves comparing the star's apparent brightness, or how bright it appears from Earth, which can be measured with telescopes. Let's say the apparent brightness is measured to be 24. It's worth noting that the naked eye's limit is around 6, meaning the star in our example is approximately 16 million times fainter than what can be seen with the naked eye. The third and final step involves applying the brightness-distance relationship, which is where a bit of cosmic magic comes into play. In astronomy, there's a fundamental rule stating that if you know how truly bright something is and can measure how bright it appears, you can calculate its distance using a simple equation known as the distance modulus equation. First, we observe the pulsation period of the star and determine its absolute brightness using the period luminosity relation. Then, using telescopes, we measure how bright the star appears from Earth. Finally, using the distance modulus equation, we calculate the distance to the star, which in this case turns out to be 5.9 megaparsecs. By employing this method with a single star of a special class, we can determine the distance to the galaxy in which it resides. In addition to Cepheid variables, astronomers also use Type 1, a supernovae, to gauge the distances to their host galaxies. While Cepheids are useful for distances on the scale of a few tens of megaparsecs, Type 1, a supernovae, are valuable for distances spanning a few hundred megaparsecs. Sometimes, astronomers combine these two methods to confirm distance measurements. With advanced technology and precise measurements, astronomers have settled on a value of around 73.4 km per s per megaparsec using Cepheid variables. However, initially, they were uncertain about this number, which prompted them to use cosmological models to verify its accuracy. If the results from the independent method involving the Cosmic Microwave Background, CMB, matched those obtained using methods like Cepheid variables and Type 1 supernovae, it would validate our understanding of the expanding universe. However, if the values didn't align, it would signify a fundamental flaw in our comprehension of the cosmos. The CMB, the oldest light in the universe, is a faint glow left over from the Big Bang, present throughout the cosmos. It offers a snapshot of the universe just 380,000 years after the Big Bang, before the formation of stars and galaxies. Unlike methods relying on the cosmic distance ladder, which measures distances in the universe, the CMB measurements provide an independent way to verify results obtained from methods like Cepheid variables and supernovae. Astronomers utilize satellites such as WMAP and the Planck spacecraft to map the tiny temperature fluctuations of the CMB across the sky. These fluctuations mirror density variations in the early universe and are linked to various cosmological parameters, including the rate 
of the universe's expansion. By examining these fluctuations, astronomers gain insights into the fundamental properties of the cosmos and validate measurements obtained through other methods. When astronomers calculated the Hubble constant using both Chepide variables and Type 1, a supernovae, they anticipated finding consistent values. However, they were met with an unexpected twist. The Hubble constant, derived from the cosmic microwave background, CMB method, was approximately 67 kilometers per s per megaparsec, which was lower than the value determined using sepides and supernovae. Although seemingly small, this difference was statistically significant and exceeded the expected margins of error for such precise measurements. This discordance, known as the Hubble tension, represents the most significant crisis in cosmology. Essentially, the Hubble tension signifies a conflict between the observed expansion rate of the universe in our local vicinity and the expansion rate inferred from the conditions of the early universe. Initially, astronomers hoped that the observed discrepancy might be due to the limited resolution of existing telescopes, including the Hubble Space Telescope. They eagerly awaited the results from the James Webb Space Telescope, expecting it to resolve the crisis. However, the Webb Telescope's findings only reinforced their concerns. Sepide variable stars, essential for measuring distances using the cosmic distance ladder, are typically found in densely packed stellar regions, implying that they are observed in clusters or crowds. This presents challenges for accurately determining their distances and contributes to the complexity of resolving the Hubble tension. The presence of other stellar objects within the field of view of chief hide variables complicates the measurement of their brightness, thus affecting the accuracy of distance estimations. A notable example is a specific red spot identified as a CFID variable in NGC 5584, observed in images taken by the Hubble Space Telescope's Wide Field Camera 3. This fuzzy object appears surrounded by numerous other celestial bodies, which can obscure accurate brightness measurements. In contrast, the James Webb Space Telescope's superior infrared capabilities provide clearer images, depicting the same CPID variable with greater clarity and, importantly, as a distinct entity separate from neighboring stars. Scientists have observed several CPID variables in two galaxies, NGC 4258 and NGC 5584. NGC 4258 is a relatively nearby galaxy with a well-established distance, while NGC 5584, which hosted the Type 1, a supernova SN 2007 AF, is a distant galaxy containing Cepheid variable stars. More than 320 Cepheid variable stars from these galaxies were analyzed using both the Hubble and the James Webb Space Telescope to evaluate and compare their capabilities in accurately measuring distances. The research paper illustrates the positions of variable stars in the galaxy NGC 4258, with periods ranging from 18 to 41 days. In the figure, Hubble images are marked in black, while web images are highlighted in magenta. The Hubble images appear crowded, while the web images, with their higher resolution, appear less crowded. This distinction is the primary reason the research paper is aptly titled Crowded No More. Similarly, image patches from both telescopes found in NGC 5584 are displayed for all Sheffied variables, with periods ranging from 39 to 43 days, indicative of brighter stars. Using these observations, the period magnitude relation was established for both galaxies as depicted in the two panels. The data points highlighted in red are derived from the Webb filter, while the gray dots represent observations from the Hubble Space Telescope filter. 
This comparison reveals the superior resolution and clarity of images obtained from the James Webb Space Telescope compared to those from the Hubble Space Telescope, allowing for more accurate measurements and analysis of variable stars' properties, such as their periods and magnitudes. The comparison reveals that the red data points derived from observations with the James Webb Space Telescope follow the same trend as the grey ones obtained from the Hubble Space Telescope. However, there is a noticeable reduction in the standard deviation for both galaxies in the Webb data points. A lower standard deviation indicates reduced error, a trend clearly observed in the Webb data points. To confirm these results, the same team observed larger samples of Kepide variables and supernovae in a total of six galaxies. To their surprise, they obtained consistent results that confirmed the Hubble tension. Based on this, the team confidently ruled out measurement error as the cause of the Hubble tension. Therefore, the observations made by the James Webb Space Telescope have validated the value of the Hubble constant, confirming the crisis in cosmology. This implies that the Hubble tension isn't solely a result of technological limitations or measurement uncertainties. Instead, it exposes a gap in our fundamental understanding of the universe, prompting further investigation into the underlying mechanisms driving the observed discrepancies in the universe's expansion rate. Now that the James Webb Space Telescope has confirmed the Hubble tension, we are faced with uncertainty about what exactly we are missing. It's possible that there's an error in distance measurements or that our understanding of the cosmic microwave background is flawed, leading to a discrepancy between the two values. Additionally, it's conceivable that both values are flawed and an unknown factor is at play. Resolving the Hubble tension is critical for three main reasons. Firstly, it involves testing the standard model of cosmology, the Lambda Cold Dark Matter model, which is the current best model of cosmology. If inaccuracies in this model are causing the Hubble tension, resolving it could lead to significant revisions. Secondly, resolving the Hubble tension could provide insights into understanding dark energy, the mysterious force driving the accelerated expansion of the universe, which makes up 68% of the observable universe. The Hubble constant is directly related to the rate of this expansion, so discrepancies in its measurement could offer new insights into the nature of dark energy. Finally, understanding the rate of cosmic expansion is crucial for predicting the universe's fate. Different expansion rates can imply different scenarios, from an endless expansion where galaxies become increasingly isolated to a big crunch where the universe collapses back in on itself, or even a big rip where the fabric of space-time is torn apart. Resolving the Hubble tension is a step toward understanding our cosmic destiny. Thank you for watching the video. Please subscribe to our channel and I am waiting to hear your valuable comments.